give you a quick intro to myself and Lauren. So um, I'm Savannah Sanchez of The Social Savannah. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, a little bit of background, Lauren and I used to work together at an ad agency where I was the media buyer and she was the ad designer. And we worked together for two years on some really large accounts, some of them spending up to a million dollars on ads a month. And so the way our process was is that I would write the copy, Lauren would design the ad creatives, and then I would media buy and launch the ads. So Lauren and I have worked together on a hundreds of accounts and probably thousands of ads over the last couple of years, um, no exaggeration. And then in December, um, I left that ad agency. I decided to go out on my own as the social savannah and service a handful of e-commerce clients doing their um, media buying and ad creatives. So super excited. Lauren also left the agency. We've teamed up together so that I now tackle the media buying. She tackles the ad design and it's really worked out well for the clients that we serve. So, so excited that you guys are here. Thank you guys for coming. I'm going to let Lauren give a little intro to herself too. Yeah. Hi everyone. Super excited to be doing this with Savannah. Um, yeah. So again, like Savannah said, I've worked with um, her for the past two years, um, doing a bunch of creative. We've had a lot of brainstorming sessions together um, on why creative is working and why it's not working. <laughs> um, and just really, you know, been able to like tackle those ideas together and I think really fine tune our process. Oh, can you guys not hear me? Hold on. Can everyone hear Lauren? Okay, well, one person Great. can't hear you, but it looks okay. like 20 other people can. So thanks for coming to our day. <laughs> yeah. um, with these webinars, there's there's always some troubleshooting issues. So I won't take you guys too much more of your time before we dive into the meat of this, but yeah. I do want to announce we are launching a brand new model for how we're working with clients. And it is, we are going to do all of our ad creatives for free and only charge you if our ad creatives are beating what is currently going on in your account. So we're probably gonna take on one, maybe max two clients to test out this model. New, new ad creatives each week. If we're beating your CPA you're, from the ads you're currently running, then we bill you on that. Otherwise, we're doing it for free. So it's a super great offer. We're gonna test it out. We think we can really scale some brands using this model. If you guys are interested at all, please get in touch on the socialsavannah.com to work with us. So without further ado, let's dive into the ad creative webinar and we're going to teach you guys everything we know about making great ad creatives. We've made a lot of bad ads in our time, luckily a lot of amazing ads in our time. So hopefully you can avoid some of the mistakes we've learned along the way and some tips and tricks we've picked up. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Cool. Lauren, how are we looking in terms of the setup? Good. I can see it. Great. Thanks. All righty. <laughs> Let's <laughs> dive in. What kind of creative engages audiences online? That's why you guys are all here today and we're here to show you. So a bit of background of why you should listen to Lauren and I and why we consider ourselves experts in ad creatives. We've worked with over 50 e-commerce brands spending anywhere from 50,000 to a million dollars in ad spend a month. Um, both when we were working with the agency together and now we're servicing a handful of e-commerce brands um, working on their media buying and ad creative strategies. So we've teamed up on a couple of accounts together. Um, some of the, we've worked in a ton of different industries um, from phone cases, accessories, makeup, apparel, shoes. We've done it all, all in e-commerce, but we have worked with a wide breadth of clients, a range of AOV from $10 to $5,000. So um, we've made a lot of ads in our time and we're excited <laughs> to be working with a cool, a few cool brands right now. Great. So a bit about our process. We test new ads weekly for our clients. So here's our client peel and how it works is I do the media buying. I work with Lauren on making the ad creative strategies and then Lauren executes the designs. So here's just a few of the awesome ones we made for this client. Yeah, and with this too, um, this has been a lot of us, you know, testing for scale. So definitely trying new things in the account um, and then getting some winners. But these are just kind of like a, a, ver a variety of 
um, different ads that I've designed for Peel. Um, and this is kind of, I guess, what we like to call our toolkit. So definitely designing, you know, different um, sorts of variations that we can test, um, you know, in feed on Instagram, testing still images, videos. So definitely like to do a lot of different variations so that we can see how we can scale um, our brands. Absolutely. And if any of you guys have been following me on Twitter and like listening to some of my methodology, I definitely believe that creative is the way to scale ad accounts. It's not about any media buying hacks or like crazy tactics. It all boils down to having a wide variety of creatives and accounts and doing weekly creative testing and then learning from those tests so you know what to make for the next week. So it's not about finding some magical target audience to target or um, like hacking your way. It really all boils down to this creative testing process. So that's how we work with our clients. It's each week a brand new creative test. Yeah, so the fastest growing advertisers test 11 times more creative, and this contributed to three times more revenue growth in 2019. So the way we like to look at this is, like Savannah said, definitely testing, you know, a lot of different variations. Um, like Savannah said, we've tested thousands of creatives um, to try to figure out which ones actually work which then once we kind of narrow those down and find the winners, then we've been able to scale our accounts um, through the creatives that we've been able to develop. So in short, creativity times scale equals fire. This is the equation it really boils down to for ad success. Um, the more creatives you put in the account, um, the better your testing methodology and the way that you're testing the account is gonna allow you to scale. And that's how we work with all of our brands. We've been able to double and triple spend in some cases for our brands in a very short period of time, just by this rapid creative testing process. So we're really excited to show you some of the learnings that we've made from all of this creative testing and how you guys can start creative testing on your own brands. Yeah, so video is obviously exploding on mobile and i think everyone kind of knows that by now um 70 of all mobile data traffic will be video in 2020 and again i think with you know the way that instagram is and snapchat and everything we've definitely been able to see that most of the time people are on their mobile devices and anytime you have video um it always seems to drive more engagement um when we are actually building our creative Absolutely. So when we think about making ad creatives, video is really going to be at the forefront of that strategy. Now, video doesn't mean you have to have a big production shoot and all this video content. It can literally be as simple as picking up your iPhone, filming UGC, filming a video of your product, or if you have still images, like making a slideshow animation or animating the text. Like it really just has to add just a bit of animation and that's going to engage people a lot more. So a lot of what we're thinking about for our clients is how do we take their existing assets, whether it's still imagery, product on white, and bringing it to life with some animation. And that's just really been able to see um, incremental performance increases. Yeah, so the mobile feed is different um, to other audience touch points. So Savannah and I were actually talking about this before, but when when we're doing um, when we're designing for mobile, um, I think the one thing to to recognize is that it's frequent. Most of the time, you have your sound off and it's fast. So when designing for anything for mobile, usually when I'm going through the ad process and designing, what I think is how can I capture someone within the first three seconds, and does my ad make sense with the sound off? So I think those two main things are the the things that you need to think about when designing your ads and designing for um, mobile feed, because those are the two things that are definitely gonna either, um, I think will help kind of, you know, move the creative along. And the one thing that I've definitely noticed is that sound off and making sure that your ad makes sense with the sound off is probably the biggest thing that I've noticed. If it doesn't make sense, if you can't hear the sound, then people aren't gonna understand, um, you know, what you're trying to sell. Absolutely. So content is consumed differently on mobile. Attention is no longer a passive activity. So as you guys probably know from your own behavior on social media, there's so much content to be consumed. 
people are looking at their feeds 24 seven, they're seeing a bombardment of both like their friends content and ad content. So it's really important to capture attention quickly with your ads. That should be your number one goal. It's to capture attention, intrigue them enough so that they swipe up or click to your website. It doesn't matter what platform it's on. We've done the same methodology for Facebook ads, Instagram, Snapchat, Google. It all comes down to grabbing attention quickly and intriguing them enough to swipe up to get to the website. So with this said, I also want to make the point that you don't have to tell your entire brand story with your ad creatives in three seconds. It's nearly impossible. You just need to get their attention. And then once they're on the website, use your website to explain the product benefits, um, really sell them, but you don't have to do all the selling just in the first three seconds of the ad. It's about just making it short, sweet, grab attention, get them to the website. Yeah. And I think that's where I, a lot of people actually like misinterpret the way that designing ads is, you know, how you design ads. Um, most of the time I've seen a lot of ads where people actually try to gather as much information and put as much information into one ad as possible. And most of the time people, it just, it doesn't make sense. Like it's too much information. People get bored. They want to scroll past it. So as long as you can gather, you know, grab their attention within the first three seconds, engage them enough to want to click to your website. If you have all the information on your website, they're going to take the time to actually you know, go on your website, read the information, look through what you're talking about and really dive in deeper. I think more people now are, are smarter enough to, you know, browse the website and find the information that they're looking for. Uh, yeah, yeah so, exactly. So <laughs> go ahead, <laughs> go ahead, Lauren. Uh, yeah. So I was just going to so, dive in. Video matters. <laughs> All right. No, for real. You could go. <laughs> so yeah. So just like we were saying, video matters more than ever. Um, people gaze five times longer at videos than static images um, on Facebook and Instagram and video content is driving the highest levels of engagement. So I just want to point out with this that video is definitely very, very important, but static images can work as, as well. This is just information that we're telling you that video on mobile is going to grab your attention faster than a static image possibly could. So I've seen some questions over here, people asking about static images, if they can work. Yes, they can, but we're just also letting you know that that video is going to probably be the one thing that will like grab your attention. And that could be a static image with, you know, a little bit of motion on it as well. Exactly. And also think about the full funnel, right? Like in prospecting, so people that are like a cold audience and never heard from your product, you're going to be probably more effective using a video to at least like bring it to life a bit more, grab that attention. But we often use still images in remarketing. So retargeting people who have been to the website, people who already know your product. It's a lot easier to just show an image and they, they know what you're talking about since they're familiar with your brand. So you also have to think about for my product, do they need more education? Is a video gonna show that better? Um, whereas a still image is really great if they already know about your product. Also still images work well for apparel in particular because if you're selling a cute shirt, people are gonna see the photo of the cute shirt and either one or not. Like there's not like an education process where if you're selling a $5,000 couch, like I am with my client that's outer sofa, people aren't just gonna see a photo of a sofa and instantly buy. I mean, if they do, that would be awesome. But <laughs> most of the time it takes some video, it takes showing value props. Um, there's there's more of an education behind it. So you can also think of that when framing, does static images work best for my brand? But when in doubt, um, videos with even just some simple animation. Exactly. So a bit of the blast of the past, TV ads. <laughs> Um, if you watch ads on TV, you notice that the main message always comes at the end. So this is the, the story climax arc. It, the story develops, the problem, solution, here's our product, end up buying. So the main message and call to action is at the end of the commercial once they've told you their story. However, with social ads, split the script a bit. You want to just have the main message within the first three seconds. And then you kind of just elaborate a bit more, but you can see how huge that drop off is. Like, so for that light blue line that represents attention on mobile feed, you have to capture them within that first three seconds. So it says attention on mobile should be rewarded early, giving people a reason to pay attention. 
So you need to earn people's attention. You capture them in that first three seconds. Hopefully they swipe up in that time and then it kind of arcs out from there. So when you think about designing mobile first video creative, you have to know what your product is and the problem it's solving in the first three seconds, which is a challenge. I'm not <laughs> saying that's easy. That's why Lauren and I spend our entire day thinking about how we can come up with strategies to do this. Um, if it was easy, we'd all be millionaires, but it's something we're continually testing. How do we grab attention in that first three seconds? How do we show the product, show it, it's the problem it's solving? Because most of the time people are swiping up, swiping away after the first three seconds of watching a video. You only have three seconds to capture their attention. If you don't do it then, you're gonna lose them. So yeah, so optimizing video for mobile. So usually when I design my ads, um, any ads that I'm doing with Savannah, the first thing I do is I think about the shortest version. So the 15 second length, that's usually how long it is um, in an Instagram feed. I just try to think of, okay, what is the quickest way that I can get the information that I need to get out there quickly? And I only have 15 seconds to do this. And how can I get them within the first three to five seconds? So usually when I'm designing for my creative, that's how I start. Most of the time, you know, it's kind of, you have a lot of footage. Sometimes, you know, we'll get, we'll get video files that are, you know, two to five minute videos. And I have to figure out how I can cut all of this down into a 15 second video that's gonna capture someone's attention quickly. It's going to give, get them within the first three to five seconds. Does it make sense without the sound off? And are they going to play, you know, are they gonna continue to play this and watch this, you know, variation over and over. So it's definitely a challenge, but I think if you can think that way first, it's gonna help you when you're developing your creatives and how you're thinking about the process and how you're thinking about laying out, you know, the videos that you need to um, get out there. I think if you can, if you can think about it and get the, you know, get the information out within the first three seconds, I think that will definitely help you to, you know, go on to the longer form videos after that. Absolutely. And another great point on this slide is attention grabbing video thumbnails. So you can even upload a custom thumbnail to Facebook and for in your Instagram ads. And so that split second as someone scrolling by your video and seeing an attention grabbing thumbnail, that can be the difference between them deciding to watch it versus them scrolling by. So thumbnails are important. The first couple seconds of the frame are really important. Another point we're going to say again is designed for sound off. So many brands don't do this and it makes me want to tear my hair out if I see an ad that I can't understand without sound because over 80% of videos viewed on Facebook and Instagram are viewed without sound, 80%. Like if you are not designing for sound off, then anyways, it's my number one pet peeve and you'll see. You'll see why uh, we actually pulled some examples of like what not to do. And yeah, you'll, you'll see why it doesn't, it doesn't hit well without sound and then also play more. So ad creative should be creative. Like part of it is finding new ways to grab people's attention. The brands that are breaking through and like succeeding are the ones that are on the forefront of new trends, whether it's trying new formats, um, just, I, I mean, there's no better way to say it other than like being creative and being a disruptor. So I'm sure many of you are in my Facebook ad creatives only group. If you're not, definitely join. It's look on Facebook for Facebook ad creatives only. It's the name of the group. And the whole goal of that is we want to be able to share ads that are best performing for e-commerce that people are using um, to drive revenue for their business. And often the ones we share are extraordinarily creative and disrupting. So Definitely go on there if you want to see what some of the disruptors are doing in the space. So this is another, another one of our clients, Lollaboo. And again, to Savannah's point um, and everything that we've been talking about, all of these ads that were created were designed for mobile first. So the first one, there's one of them. I mean, I had so much footage of you know testimonials and reviews and everything and i had to get this within you know 15 seconds and how can i make it effective in 15 seconds and so you know pulling the best quotes from people uh, making sure that it was really easy to digest 
you know, really quick things that will grab your attention. You can read the reviews, you can go through it. And it's just, it's, it's there within the first three seconds and it's there within 15, within 15 seconds as well. So these are just some of the ones that we've had. Um, and especially the ones at the end, the native ones, those ones are always great. Everyone loves UGC. Everyone loves the native, you know, style feed. It looks, it doesn't look like an ad. It looks like someone's just posting it to share with your friend. And these we've noticed have always converted really highly. Um, and I think it's just kind of that like conversation piece that you have that it looks so native to your feed that you think that it's, again, one of your friends talking about it. Absolutely. I mean, if you guys don't know this already, people don't like ads. Um, I love ads, Lauren loves ads, but your customers don't. So if you could kind of find a way to trick them, and I think UGZ is a perfect example of it, of like, is this an influencer posting? Is this my friend posting? Even though in like a split second, they're gonna realize that this might be an ad, but you got their attention for that split second, and it might be the difference between them deciding to watch more of the video versus them like speed scrolling right by. So with that said, there isn't an ad type that works well for every client. Like. Part of our process is this wide breadth of creative testing. We want to test very different types of creatives and different formats. So as you can see, like are, these are all very different from each other. And these are going to also talk to a different audience. So some people might resonate more with UGC. Some might more resonate with like a long form video. So there isn't like a one size fits all, especially when you're spending like $5,000, $10,000 an day on ads. You can't just rely on one creative type. Like I'm just relying on UGC or I'm just relying on slideshows. You need a wide breadth of creatives because every person is gonna react differently to different types and different types of messaging. Like for instance, the third one on here, it's all about back and stop, get it before we sell it again. That messaging is gonna resonate better than people with the second one. That's another offer, $30 off orders over a hundred. So with that said, test, 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 test. <laughs> So avoid common ad mistakes, learn the golden rules. So we, we've kind of hinted to some of the golden rules of ad creative, yet it just makes me cry because I do see a lot of ads out there that aren't following these basic rules. So I'm gonna show you guys some ads that are not following the golden rules that we've talked about. And I want you guys in the comments to guess what is wrong with this ad? Like why, why is this not a good ad? So I'm gonna go ahead and play the first one. As you can see, there's a sad face because I don't think this is a good ad. Love this brand. I'm so sorry if you are the owner of Wild Earth and you're on here, but we're just trying to help. All righty. So when you're, while you're watching, please feel free to put in the comments, what, what's wrong with this ad? Um, and I will happily go into my feelings about it too. <laughs> Because um, I think there's a lot that can be improved on here. So I'm going to go back to the start as well. It was just that guy talking for the rest. So some of you guys might have guessed this. It doesn't have captions. I don't know what this guy is saying. Like, I'm sure he's giving an amazing review. I just, I just can't hear it because I'm one of the 80% of people who view ads without sound on. Also, another red flag here is, I don't know what they're selling in the first three seconds. So here's one second, two second, three second. Are they selling a kettle, um, kitchen supplies, a new coffee maker? I don't know, but because I know this brand, I actually know that they sell really awesome dog food. It's vegan, it's high protein, it has all these added benefits, but I did not understand that it was dog food, let alone all the amazing benefits it had in that first three seconds. Um, I don't know, what, Lauren, what, what do you think of it? Yeah, it's this, I mean, the same, like this is always something that Savannah and I talk about all the time. And I mean, truthfully, when I first saw this ad, I thought it was for coffee. So I thought, oh, it's for coffee. And then it started talking about dogs and going into dogs and yeah, it's just a very confusing ad. And yeah, it definitely does, it doesn't grab my attention. And caption, 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 always use captions. <laughs> Can't say it enough. For sure. And also I think they could benefit by shortening this video. I think this video is like almost a minute long, um, 15 to 30 seconds max. Also like be intentional with your copy, I would say, just a short note on copy. People don't like to read. I don't like to read. Um, 
make it short and sweet and to the point. Like if I just read the headline really quickly, cause I'm trying to figure out what they're selling Earth Day promo, say 50% on your first subscription, try, try wild earth today. I, I, I still don't know what the product is. I don't know what I'm subscribing to. I don't know that this has to do with dogs. And the top paragraph, I think it can be shortened to maybe one sentence that kind of summarizes the main value props. Cause I'm not reading a paragraph when I'm scrolling through and trust me, your customers aren't either. Yeah, and I think that's actually another good point to bring up just with copy and our creative. A lot of the times, you know, when we do copy and creative, you know, the copy does matter as well. You need to make sure you're having clear call to actions, making sure you're having clear headlines and shorten your copy as much as possible. Cause like Savannah and myself, I don't like to read. I just want to know exactly what it is. Like short and sweet always is a, is a good indicator as well. Absolutely. So I'm going to show you an ad that I think takes those principles of adding captions, gets to the point quickly, and does it in a way that I think is probably a lot more effective for their advertising. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this and would love to hear you guys' comments on this, you guys' reaction on this in the comments as well. So probably the first thing you notice is that the video is completely legible without sound. You know exactly what's going on. And also wanted to point out the, the copy is also very effective. It says, I noticed improvements in my posture immediately, a five-star review. And also going back to the first three seconds of the video, posture, that's right. Perfect posture. How do you do it? Upright trainer. Like in the first five seconds, I have a really great idea what this product is. And even actually from the first thumbnail, my mind is already thinking about this is something to do with posture. It's a device to improve posture. Like, and the brand is called Upright Trainer. Like, you gotta make it easy for people. Like, don't make them guess what your product is. Like, just tell them really quickly in the first few <laughs> seconds. Um, yeah, Lauren, what, what's your take on this ad? Yeah, I agree. And I think too, like I've seen this ad, um, you know, once you get this, a copy of this and you scroll through all these things, this actually, this ad has actually stopped me in the feed. So, you know, as I'm scrolling through things really fast, the whole posture, the way that it like kind of grabs you really fast, that definitely will like stop me and be like, oh, what's this? So like stuff like that, like you, when you think about it, you're going through, through it so fast through your feed every day that those quick things that can grab you to stop it'll stop you really fast and then you can engage in it. So definitely this is a great ad. Absolutely. And I also like a side note, I like that they used like a mix of UGC. It's not just this guy talking the whole time. He's only gonna appeal to maybe a subset of people, but they're using a lot of different types of people, um, a lot of different age groups. And um, I think that this, uh, this ad, because they're using a combination of UGC is gonna open up the amount of people who are gonna resonate with it. So. The more types of UGC you can combine, um, different people adding reviews that just kind of add validation. Like multiple people love this product, it's not just one. So, whereas in our other ad, it was just like this one guy talking about it, but maybe I don't resonate with him as much. Maybe I wanna hear three or four different opinions about it. So here's another sad ad. Again, I'm so sorry, Baboon. <laughs> I think you're an awesome brand. This ad just didn't do it for me. Um, I feel like I have to apologize when I critique people ads, but this advice will only make you guys better. So I'm gonna play this, put in the comments what, why you think we don't like it. And I'll tell you guys at the end. So that was that. <laughs> My advice here, clear always beats clever. So I kind of like after giving this some thought and I've watched this ad a lot of times now thinking about why, why it's just not hitting well for me. First of all, I own this bag and it's an awesome bag. Like I can talk about the value props this bag all day long, but it's a gym bag. And I think that because it's like coronavirus, they're trying to do an angle of like, bring your gym bag to the grocery store. Like since you can only go to the grocery store during coronavirus, like you're not gonna take it to the gym. 
but then again like my mind thinks like are they stealing at this grocery store because that's why they're bringing this massive bag to like load it up with shit um and steal um i don't know like and like the cap the caption is really weird too it says a great for at home workout tutorials even as supportive of neck pillow lying down like i think this ad would have hit better like if they were showing someone like working out at home like using this gym bag for their workout tutorial and then like it says like an interplanetary interplanetary adventure operation i don't know this one didn't do it for me i think they were trying to be too clever but it ends up just not being effective because i don't really know why i should buy this gym bag other than to like buy it to go steal stuff from the grocery store i don't know what's your take <laughs> Oh man. So this is, this is definitely an ad that, I mean, Savannah and I both love Baboon. Like I love Baboon. I think they do have some great, you know, ads. This one again, I don't, I agree. I, it didn't do it for me. Um, and we have actually, <laughs> Savannah and I have used, you know, sort of like this inspiration for other clients. Um, we've had one where we tried to make it super creative, trying to make it clever with this like Baber Day sale type thing. Um, it was for a Labor Day sale, but the creative and the copy and everything, it was, we were trying to be funny. We were trying to be, you know, make it, you know, kind of kitschy. No one understood it. It was a super, it was horrible. It flopped like tremendously. And after we looked at it, we were like, people just want to know what you're selling, what the sale messaging is, like, what is it? Like, so it definitely clear always beats clever <clears throat> for sure. Yeah, learn learn from Lauren I's mistakes. We we've tried this approach before. We thought we were being so clever and funny. Um, it doesn't work. Be clear. Yeah. So it's not to say you don't have to be creative and you don't have to be funny or like somewhat clever, but I think there's a way to be clear and clever. So I'm gonna show you this next ad that I like a lot. And I thought it was super funny. So they're using like modern like gifts or memes, whatever the kids are doing these days. Um, <laughs> this is a popular meme. And they're saying like, girls are looking at the guy who uses fabric skincare. But from looking at this ad, like for a split second, just like as everyone else in the feeds looking at this for a split second, I can kind of tell what they're selling. I'm like, they're selling skincare as a call to action, skincare finally simplified. Um, the copy is great. We can't make her forget about her ex, but we can make your skin good, look great. Try us out. Like, I thought this ad was a hit. Um, I'm sure it did well, but it's just like, it's it's clever and clear. So you, you can have both, but just don't go too far to where like only you and your brand are going to understand it and think it's funny. Like it has to have some type of mass appeal. Yeah, exactly. And like, if there's a lot of times too where, you know, Savannah and I will look at something and we think we're hilarious. And we think that like, oh, this ad's going to crush because we totally get it. And then you can show someone else, you know, who has never seen the brand, doesn't know anything about it. And they look at it and they don't understand it. So like, there's definitely ways I think to like get around these things, but I love this ad too. Like Savannah said, the meme is great. Everyone knows this meme. And then putting your product front and center is just a great way to, you know, really sell this product. 100%. I mean, I like to call it the like the grandma test. And what I mean is like, you should be able to show an ad to your grandma, and for her to be able to tell you what they're selling. Like if she doesn't understand it, then you guys are not being effective. Um, so that's, that's one test you can do with your ads. Also, like I also I often ask my husband, I'm like, hey, like, what do you think they're selling here? And I'll show them the ad without giving them any context because that's how everyone else is viewing your ads. They're from totally different backgrounds, all different age ranges. Um, it has to be able to be understood by the masses, not just you and your brand because you guys are so cool and clever. Yep. All righty. Next one on the chopping block, Daily Harvest. Again, so sorry. You're a great brand. I respect a lot of your creatives. This one did not do it for us. Um, let's give it a play. Put in the comments again what you think is wrong with this ad. Are you guys bored? <laughs> I'm a little bored. 
Whew. Well, I'll spare you guys because there's actually a like a minute and a half left of this ad. It's a two minute ad. Oh, it, it doesn't get much better, um, unfortunately. So <laughs> what sins are they committing here? Keep it concise. Um, I don't know if any of you guys use the saying like TLDR or too long, don't read. <laughs> That's how I feel about this ad. Like it's too long. I don't care that much about your product. I don't even know what you guys are selling. Daily Harvest does like these meal deliveries that like sell like smoothies and stuff. But I don't even know that. They don't even show the product in the full ad. Like this is just um, really not a good ad at all in that sense. So you can't understand it without sound. That's number one. Um, I don't know what you're selling in the first five seconds, let alone 15 seconds, even in two minutes. I think it was just explaining that like grocery stores are greedy. I don't even know. but. I just, I, this ad just didn't do it for me. I think they were trying to do too much um, when they should have just focused on grabbing attention and being clear about what the product is. I 100% agree. <clears throat> I love Daily Harvest. I actually save a lot of their ads because I do think they do a really good job. This one, when I saw this ad, I, I was just like, I, I can't, I don't understand this at all. I think they started to maybe do something good with like the big text and like maybe kind of grabbing your attention. But then it just kind of went off into this like pit of nonsense that I don't understand. And I just think they tried to get too, you know, tried to get too creative, I think, with it and just really lost me on the entire thing. For sure. Don't try as hard. Maybe that's that's the lesson. Is like yeah. <laughs> just shoot like from UGC with your product and someone talking about it. Like I'm sure this cost them a lot of money. This nice explainer video, but nobody's watching it, and absolutely no one understands what they're selling. So not very effective. With that said, you can explain like the reasons behind your brand, even like some science behind it, or like whatever in a concise way and in a way that's mobile friendly. So when I say mobile friendly, you want less than 30 seconds and with captions and getting to the point quickly. Also, what I like about this ad, even just on the thumbnail, you know what they're selling. It's ritual, you see the bottle. How do you know your vitamins work? Instantly my mind is framed of this is a vitamin brand. This is what it looks like. The headline is great. Make the visionary vitamin making headlines and blah, blah, blah. I'll play this ad for you and you can see, you can understand it very well with sound off, gets to the point quickly while explaining some of the science behind their product. Yeah, and another great thing to know is too, like I, like, I think Ritual does a really good job with just making things, you know, they, they have a lot of scientific information and they have a lot of, you know, reasons and, you know, ingredient, you know, things to talk about. And I just always feel like they do it in a very clever way. And they always do it in a way that's very easy to digest. So those are things like if you have a product that has a lot of, you know, scientific information, I think you just need to dumb it down a little bit and just make it very clear, like, you know, to, or to Savannah's point, like, can you explain it to your grandma? Does she understand it? Will she get what this means in this vitamin? If you can do it that way, I think it'll just be a lot more clear to the people you're trying to sell to. Absolutely. Keep it concise, keep it clear, use captions, make it short. And um, yeah, the formula is pretty simple, um, but you'd be surprised. A lot of brands don't use that formula. So <laughs> you can keep that framework in mind. You're gonna put yourself ahead of your competition. Cause chances are your competition is, is probably one of these ads that we showed that isn't following these best practices. But now you guys know and you've learned from our mistakes. <laughs> so matching consumers' behavior on mobile can positively impact campaign results. So we talked a lot about the golden rules of ad creatives, the mistakes you need to avoid. Now let's talk a bit about what exact ad formats work best to catch people's attention. So yeah, so these are just some of the favorite ad formats that we have used and that have done really well for our, our clients. So PR and reviews, those are super easy to understand. It explains, you know, you get a lot of validation from the reviews. If you have had PR, you know, people love PR reviews and articles because it just validates the brand more. 
So we definitely love to add those into any sort of testing that we do because it, it always works. It, I don't think, I mean, we've had some that probably haven't worked as best, but like for the most part, reviews and PR are always winners. Absolutely. So like the first add on here, this is our client leaf shave and this one works incredibly well for them just because not only does it show the functionality of the product, it's like a really nice close up image showing that it's a pivoting head. It, we could have easily made this without motion of just a photo of the razor, but I don't think that would have done nearly as well as when we added the motion to it. Just We just filmed like a simple GIF on our iPhone of showing the razor, like going back and forth and having the motion of the, the reviews on there. That makes a lot of difference. So that also goes back to those simple animations. Same with the Forbes article, the second one. Just adding like those little tiny gifts on there is making it so much more eye catching. So motion combined with PR and reviews is the way to go. Yeah, and a lot of times too, like even the one for the Forbes article that we pulled, like this one was served as an ad and all they did was take a screenshot of this Forbes article, add some gifts, and I'm sure this crushed. <laughs> Like it did, so, I mean, it caught me in the feed. This was one that we had shared in one of our groups and we were like, this is a great ad. <laughs> Simple, sweet, to the point. Absolutely. And it just added some motion to it. And the third one actually falls into like two of our, fav our favorite categories. We love PR and review ads. We also love split screen. We actually have a few split screen examples to show you as well. Um, using like this mixed media format, we've seen has had an incremental lift in ad performance. So. This one's kind of using both of those strategies, which is awesome. Now, my favorite type of ads, <laughs> if any of you guys follow me on Twitter, you guys know I make a lot of UGC, self-proclaimed UGC queen. So I like to think that I was one of the first people who were starting to make UGC brands. <laughs> I started doing this like a year ago. And UGC has just taken off, especially in the last six months, is like a really effective ad format. So whether it's, you can always send your product to me, I'm happy to make you some UGC, or reaching out to your customers to get um, really great content. There's tons of influencer agencies and um, ways to reach out to Instagram influencers to also send your product out. But it does work really well for ads, like adding that level of human, that human element, people validating the brand with um, the testimonial, the reviews. Sorry, this one's buffering really badly, so you can't see all of it, but. Yeah, but there's yeah. these definitely like anytime Savannah and I have talked to our clients, I think one of the first things we ask is, do you have testimonials? Do you have, you know, UGC that we can utilize? Because those are the first things that I love to look at when designing for our clients. Because again, it just brings back that validation. You know, maybe you don't have enough money to like, you know, send it to all these PR places and get all this PR reviews. These sorts of ads with the testimonials and in real life people using it, people actually resonate with it more because they just understand like, okay, well, these are the people that use it. They love it. You know, I want to get my, I want to get this product as well. Absolutely. It's definitely not about using expensive influencers or celebrities. It's just about reaching out to like great content creators. These are often people with even smaller followings or people like me with no following at all, but understand like conversion best practices and can make a great testimonial. So would highly recommend investing in some UGC for your strategies. And if you want some help with that, you can always reach out to us. <laughs> so here's another format I kind of alluded to in terms of ones that are best performing are like these mixed media, like split screen types. I think that these just capture a lot of attention in the feed that kind of make your eye stop for a second while being able to show both video and stills within the same format. So split screen is definitely something I would be testing out for your brands. Yeah, again, the the peel one, like that was from, you know, actually our client shot that UGC for us. I just said, hey, I need you to take the phone. I need you to send, you know, do some different variations and just show that, you know, it you can actually like what this product actually is. And then having the product at the bottom, I think is just, you know, it's clear. Like this is what the product is, but then here's also another clear image of what the product is. Same with the middle. Like it has the different, you know, what like cereals inside of it and then it tells you like us versus them like i think all of them are just really great and then i just love the one on the right because it's talking about only real strawberries and then it mixes into you know going into the special case flake. so we definitely love um split screens for sure absolutely 
Another favorite, um, <laughs> fan favorite by, by me is native ads. So what do we mean by native is that they're using like the native Instagram story text um, to type up the text on top using polls, using GIFs. So you can literally make these with stills. So you upload your still to Instagram stories, you write out the text, you can add a poll, add some GIFs, download it, run it as an ad. And these are ads that we run on um, Instagram stories, Snapchat stories. I would say, especially for Snapchat, this native type format works really well, whether it's utilizing UGC or just a still with like the native text over it. This is just so easy to do, but like a slam dunk in terms of winning content because it doesn't look like an ad. It's very clear what they're selling and it makes it more native to the feed overall. Yeah. And I think this is another area too. Like you don't have to be, you know, like a graphic designer or a video editor to do something like this. Like to, you know, Savannah's point, like it's super easy to just upload the things that you want onto your Instagram feed, make it how you want it to look, add in the native copy, the polls, and then just save it and run it as an ad. Like even I do that sometimes, like I'll just <laughs> upload a video that I've, you know, made or I've gotten from a client, add in some different, you know, uh, native text and copy, and we just run that as an ad. So it's super simple. Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You just need to make it very clear. Yes, that should be like the highlight of this talk. Don't reinvent yeah. the wheel, make it clear. <laughs> if that's all, if that's all you got out from today, then you're going to be really great with your ad content. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then the last one um, is just this light movement. So again, to everything that we've been talking about, you know, you can have stills that have subtle movement to it. You can add in um, different, you know, elements of GIFs or, you know, sliding in of text or just subtle things of, you know, this background on the first one, like the images just slowly move inside of it. So it doesn't have to be something that's so crazy, so, you know, different. Well, it's weird about the last one, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, so like it just definitely needs to like add some subtle movement to it. And I think you can make it great. For sure. Like I said, you don't need to go out and do like a then your audio is good to go. What just happened? <laughs> I can hear you now. <laughs> I can hear you. You guys can hear me. Um, lesson learned, charge your AirPods. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Great, we're back. <laughs> um, let me just fast forward where we were. All righty. Without missing a beat, we're back. <laughs> it wouldn't be a webinar without some hiccups, right? <laughs> cool. So um, just so you know, there's a lot, you know, like I said, I've been designing for over 15 years. And there's a lot of our clients that we work with that you know, they want to know, how can I create something on the fly? How, what can I use? What programs can I use that if I don't have Adobe and I don't have After Effects or Premiere or any of those video editing applications, what can I use? So I just kind of gave you a little bit of content on what you can use and what I've actually used to build some ads as well um, that I've used on my iPhone. And they're programs that you can download. Some are free. Some are, you know, you have to pay a monthly fee of, I think the most you can pay is like, you know, 50 to $60 a month. But again, those are 
there's a variety of ones out there. So I'm just going to give you a couple that you can kind of look through. Um, and then one that I personally really like that I use a lot. Um, great. So like I said, there's a ton out there. One that I really like to use is Adobe Spark Post. Um, again, this is just a preference. Um, I've used this for many, many ads that I've created, some where I just need to create something on the fly. Um, there's a ton out there that you can use. Like I said, Canva, Visco, that's really good for stills. Quick is really good for, for editing. There's Promo, which is one that you can pay a monthly fee for. So it's all in your preference, but there's definitely a ton out there that you could use. Like I said, I personally love Adobe Spark Post because it's it's made for ads. It's actually, you can make any sort of ad you want, video, stills, whatever. It's just a great application and there's a ton of templates out there that you can use. So once you guys get this um, video to download, I went ahead and just kind of gave you a little quick tutorial on some of the ones that you can, you know, some of the layouts that they have, some of the templates. And I just kind of broke it down on, on how you can actually build out these ads um, in all these different variations. So it's just a little kind of screen record of a how-to so you can kind of see how I use Adobe Spark Post. But again, there's many that you can use. This is just one that I prefer and I really, really like it. Um, and it's, and it is really great for making ads on the fly. Yeah. So we'll be sending out this presentation in a couple hours to your email box. So you'll get um, all these tutorials and, and learn how to use Adobe Spark Post. So a bit about the creative testing process. So whether you're making new ads like we did, like we do using After Effects or utilizing just native or um, iPhone apps, it all comes back to creative testing and learning. So a bit about our process that you can try in your ad accounts as well is to make a new feed and new story ads each week around a hypothesis or testing out a different motivator and barrier for your creatives. And what we'll do is we'll, me and Lauren will concept the ad together, Lauren will design it, and then I do the media buying, I launch it in a dynamic creative test. So I'll launch a few different variations in a dynamic creative and then use the results of that to determine the next week's creative. So it's always a constant reiterative process. Every week, brand new ads, we're testing out, okay, do people about, do people care about this value prop? Um, are we gonna show this benefit or feature? And if we find one that really resonates, then each week we'll keep building off of those concepts. So this first ad right here is with my client Outer. Um, this one's testing our value prop eco-friendly materials. And so we'll make a couple of different variations around eco-friendly messaging. So like, for those of you who are media buyers who are watching this, just wanted to show you a bit about how to actually build these out in Facebook. So like I said, I utilize a system called dynamic creative testing, where you can upload multiple video variations, multiple images, different headline, different top text, and Facebook will dynamically test all of these different variations against each other. And what Lauren, will, what Lauren and I will do at the end of the week is look at the test results, see which one's got the most conversions, which one we were able to spend the most on at the lowest CPA, and then use that to inform the next week's creative. So it's a constant process of making new creatives and launching them into these dynamic creative tests. And then taking the winners out of those dynamic creative tests to scale those ads. So once we find winners, we can scale those and kill the losers. So just wanted to give you guys some stats from Facebook. Creative split tests produce strategies with an average of 71% improvement in CPA compared to losing ad sets. So this just to hit the point home even further is that those who make more assets and learn from feedback are more successful and grow faster. There's no point in making all these different creatives if you're not learning each week. So you should have a certain hypothesis in mind, what you want to test, launch the test, and have a method of how you're evaluating those results, whether it's by CPA goals, what's the click-through rate, what's the cost per click, um, be able to look at all the data to make an informed decision of what strategies are worth doubling down on and which ones you can just toss away. So we want to give you guys a framework of how we think about building motivation-based creative. So all this comes down to is a simple um, marketing philosophy of motivators and barriers. So there's going to be certain motivators of why people are going to want to buy your product. 
So capture all the reasons that will either encourage or prevent someone to buying your product, and then choose the top motivators or barriers that you want to address in your ad. Make sure that those motivators and motivators and barriers are differentiated enough so you have different tests. And they make videos, lightweight animation that are addressing these different motivators and barriers. So it's all about product solution based creative and figuring out how to be effective in your ad messaging strategy to address those. So here's one that Facebook did as a test. They took the exact same ad, it's a video, but all they did was change the intro messaging. So for the first one, they tested natural alternative messaging. Second one, for women by women. The second one is more about understanding your body. And the last one is about personalized data. So each of these different messaging strategies are going to resonate with a different type of person. So that's why you need to test a lot of different motivators and barriers. And what Facebook found after launching the split test, they found that the for women by women messaging um, had a higher three second view rate, it had 7% higher clicks, 30% higher conversions. So the messaging of created for women by women was the most effective. So here is the framework of how I like to think about making new creatives each week. And um, Lauren can dive through um, how we think about this. Yeah, so basically um, when we're building out our creative, we like to look at it like, is our creative working? Is it not working? Um, Sorry, my screen is very like, it's very pixelated. Um, but basically, <laughs> um, we just like to say like, you know, is it working, is it not working? So like ad fatigue or not, no ad fatigue. Um, so again, it kind of breaks it down into these different, bar like these different paths of how we look at the creative when we're talking about things each week. And Savannah and I definitely like to go off and, you know, okay, what's working, what's not working. If it's working, keep it. If it's not, okay, so let's figure out what are the next, you know, motivations, what are the next barriers, take a new set of creatives, create those, run a split test, figure out which one's working, which one's not working, did it convert, didn't convert. And basically, like you can go, you can literally go down this, you know, funnel and it'll help you to break out your ads and your creatives and help you think about the creatives that you want to make next in order to test different different options. So this is definitely a great framework to use when you're thinking about your creatives and how you want to start running your creative tests. Absolutely. And this is a process that, re that repeats every single week. So looking at the ad account, what's what creatives are fatigued? How can we address new motivators and barriers to unlock a new audience? Um, test three new creatives against the existing one. Were we able to unlock a new audience with that? Check the metrics talk about it with the client, do this all over again. So this is this is basically our life. <laughs> so it, that kind of wraps up our main messaging that we wanted to get to you guys today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. And um, what we wanted to mention again, we are accepting one, maybe two new clients. We only work with a handful of clients at a time. Um, and we're launching a brand new way that we're building our clients. It's based off of is our creative performing better than what's in your account right now? So you only pay if we're beating your CPA, which I think is the perfect way to structure um, this type of agreement because we want to make creatives that are going to scale your brand and lower your CPA. And if we're able to do that, then we can grow together. And then if not, then we're just a big waste of time. We don't get paid. But <laughs> we do think that we have um, a lot of expertise when it terms comes to ad creative. We've done thousands of ads literally over the last couple of years. And we, we know it works and we can test really quickly. So happy to work with you guys. Please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to me on my website and um, send me an email and we can set up a meeting for me and Lauren to discuss your brand. So we're really excited about this. We, really, we hope you guys are too. So please feel free to reach out. I also wanted to mention, we're definitely sending out the video replay. You'll get it in the next two hours along with this deck. So if you want to rewatch any of the videos, the tutorials, those are all going to be available to you. And absolutely, please feel free to get in contact, whether it's messaging us on Twitter, um, sending it to my email. We would love to chat and address any questions that you have. Um, so thank you guys again for coming. I think we're just wrapping up on time. Um,